Ladies and gentlemen in this Red Gaming Center.com video, let us further discuss the Xbox One's ES RAM, shall we? This is prompted by a recent series of quotes from a developer. The developer is Techland, and they are, of course, producing the game Dying Light. So I'm going to go into the quotes first. Um, they have said, we haven't played around much with the ES RAM yet. Currently, we use it for storing the Z buffer and shadow maps. They also added it's especially helpful because the memory is readily available for any purpose and and unite the CPU, the GPU, textures, rendering targets, and really smooths out the optimization process. Now, there's a couple of points here that really confuse me, end quote, by the way. There's a couple of points here that really confuse me. Um, primarily, the CPU, uniting the CPU. Now, the developers in question, Techland, once again, are Polish. And so, there's several possibilities. One, well, there's several I can think of. There's probably a couple of others. One, it's a mistranslation, which is possible. Um, the developer's either misspoken, particularly if he was speaking, uh, trying to speak in English, he might have slightly misspoken or maybe slightly abbreviated what he was saying because he couldn't think of the exact uh, translation in his own language, uh, Polish. Or perhaps um, it's a case of... He didn't mean it quite like that, because remember, the ESRAM isn't communicating with the CPU. As far as I understand it, from what developers have spoken about, they've never said that it actually accesses the CPU. It does have a tie to the North Bridge, as you'd expect, so technically, of course, data can be pulled and shared from the main memory pool of 8GB of DDR3, and, of course, can be sent to ESRAM, um, which is what you'd expect, uh, but primarily the tie is to the GPU, the graphics processor. Now, for point of reference, a 1080p image, that's 1920 by 1080, roughly takes a quarter of the Xbox One's ES RAM up, right? So you're looking at that 8 megs. For a second reference, if you're timesing that by four times MSAA, so multi-sampling, basically, anti-aliasing, um, and once again, we're targeting 32 bits per color. Once again, 1080p. That's pretty much all of the memory used up right there. That is using a standard normal forward renderer, by the way. And that's pretty important when you consider memory usage in games right now. For example, if you were to... And I, I'm not going to you know, give you um, a pure example, but... Just by all means, Google around, do some, uh, you know, go to a couple of websites, check out some uh, reviews of high end graphics cards for the PC, for example, the GTX 780 or the G, actually, maybe not quite that powerful, go a little bit lower, something like the GTX 660. And you could also use something like the Radeon R9 290, something like that. So you've got kind of a low range or a mid range and a higher range card. And you can actually see the differences on anti aliasing. You can also start to see just how much memory is used by these multi sampling techniques. And it really gobbles down memory. It's actually one of the reasons now that PC graphics cards are laden down with the stuff because people are using, of course, 1080p. Uh, well, basically 1080p is like the standard PC resolution now. Um, now, of course, the Xbox One is going to be utilizing tiled resources, which is a feature set of DX11.2. Now, from developers' point of view, we know that it's going to be very interesting for the next couple of years. Right now, we're in this, this transitional stage where... We've got cross-development going on, by which I don't mean that, oh, okay, the developer's working on the PC and the Xbox or whatever. Instead, I'm talking about, okay, they've got to, in the case of, for example, this game, Dying Light, they have to concern themselves with also making the engine compatible with Xbox 360, which is a really big problem. Um, from the development point of view, you can't go too crazy with certain things because otherwise you won't have that level of parity. One version is just going to be so much better um, that you know you could go on a huge open world spree. Otherwise, just for example, you know you could make the landscapes that much larger. So right now, there is a monicum of restraint that developers simply have to show. For example, um, in yesterday's interview with uh, the developers behind Thief, 
it was said that the developers are, of course, going to optimize for each of the platforms. So the PC, of course, is going to naturally have a FOV slider, so you can change the field of view. You'll be able to, for example, run it at 60 frames a second or higher, depending on your rig. You'll be able to uh, run triple monitor setups, higher texture resolution than consoles, blah, blah, blah. The PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, meanwhile, will, of course, feature the Direct X Plus feature set. So... This is contrary to the Xbox 360 generation, Xbox 360 PS3, which basically are using DX9, if you really look at it, if you boil it down to what the GPUs can pretty much do, it's a DX9 feature set, so you're missing some of those really nice lighting techniques, for example, and so on. So, basically, we're still in this transitional stage, and the developers are going to try their best, you know, to make the engine look as pretty for each of the games but obviously right now just like in the previous generation xbox 360 when it was coming out from the xbox 360 um and the xbox one you saw what the games were like to begin with i mean games like for example perfect dark uh forza you know they look nice don't get me wrong just like games like for example rise son of rome and say kill zone shadow fall they look nice on the playstation 4 slash xbox one but it's nothing compared to now because the developers are still trying to get used to it in fact those are even bad examples that i use because those were exclusive for the for the particular uh platform so that's actually a kind of a bad example if you were to look at the more cross-platform games however the cross generational games for example assassin's creed uh Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which I did a graphics comparison on PC versus PS4. You guys can check it out on the channel if you so desire. It looks good. Don't get me wrong. You know, the PC version, definitely slightly stronger. Has, you know, 60 frames per second, a couple of other shiners. But overall, the PS4 looks very close. But I can't help but feel that Ubisoft were constantly being kicked in the shin by the previous generation and i think this is going to be the case for a while as for the es ram this is the problem because a lot of developers are still constrained by the previous generation i don't think they really understand just what it's going to be like um right now because and that's not you know saying that they're clueless or whatever that's simply to say that the tools in some cases just haven't even been coded yet uh, Microsoft themselves are working diligently to improve and to even sometimes create new development kits, which is understandable. This is the same thing that Sony are likely doing with the PlayStation 4. This happened the previous generation as well. You know, when you when you first release something, you're always going to try and improve the product, right? It's like when NVIDIA released a new graphics card, just for example. It's like that that driver that they're using for the GPU isn't the final driver that you're always going to use for the life of your graphics card. For example, right now, the video are on like 331, I think, or something like that, of the drivers. Uh, technically, it's like 331.7 or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. But no doubt, there's going to be, you know, 3.32, 332, 333, 334, and so on. They're going to keep iterating the driver and improving it. So, sure, if you buy, say, a GTX 780 today, then you're going to use the latest version of the driver, but say six months down the line, they're going to improve that driver, which is always going to improve the performance for various games. It's going to um, maybe add new techniques, maybe improve the control panels. Same thing with the game's developers. Uh, oh, sorry, with console developers. They're going to improve the you know development kits. They're going to improve the tools to actually create the games. And they're also, in some cases, going to reduce the footprint that, say, the operating system takes up. Anyway, this has been kind of a bit of a rant on my part. Not exactly staying on focus there, but whatever. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.